Welcome to part 2 fruit smasher game. In this video we will learn how to toss the fruit in the air just like to give a volcano effect and how to adjust the camera view. Let's head back to unity and create a new script. So in order to toss different fruits in, in the air we need to create a script which is going to take this responsibility of adding vertical force to our game objects. So right click. So make sure that you are in scripts folder. Right click in the scripts and create a new C sharp script. And this one is the script name is Pro Fruit Fruits. Press enter. Now open and make some changes. So first of all, we will be creating an array of game objects because here we will be using three fruits and that's why we will be creating an array. Instead of in our previous session, we created a strawberry game object, one game object. Here we will be using three different fruits. That's why we need to create an array. So I'm going to call it public game object fruits equal to new game object of size 3 so we created these this array let me just put it down here array of we'll be adding a torque force over here now this torque force is uh, helpful in rotating or spinning the game object different fruits will be spinning in the air will be rotating in the air so public load torque is equal to 3.0 f spinning the fruits in the air so we need to add some gravitational forces over here and tie gravitational forces over here so it is going to be to be the range of anti gravitational forces so public load minimum anti gravity force is equal to 20.0 f and we can declare one more variable max in anti gravity force is equal to 40.0 f well the objective of this uh, anti minimum and maximum anti gravitational force is to generate the range of numbers and between that range the values will be taken now we need to throw these fruits from the bottom instead of throwing from the top so it is going to be tossed from the bottom so again we will be declaring some ranges over here float minimum force is a is equal to minus 15 negative value here as it is going to be thrown from the bottom public float maximum force is going to be 15.0 now in order to create a very good impact very good feel of the game we will be having two delay variations two ranges so the, the fruit is going to be thrown in the air between 1 to 3 seconds. So it can take 1 second, it can take 2 seconds or it can take 3 seconds. So uh, the, the, player is not, the player is not aware that when the, the, the game object is thrown in the air. So there will be a delay. So there is the delay will be between 1 to 3 seconds. <laughs> Minimum delay is going to be 1.0 F one second and max delay is going to be 3.0 F. Delay in throwing objects or tossing objects. Now these objects will not be thrown from a particular you can say direction or moving so we need to create a random behavior of throwing these or tossing these objects so we will be declaring 
ranges for x axis and z axis public float min max is equal to minus 30.0f and min max x is going to be minus 30.0f similarly we will be getting the range for z axis as well so public load public float 5.0 f comma max z is equal to 20.0 so we need to declare one more variable for infinite loop to check whether the loop is going to run infinite time so this is going to be private private whole infinite loop is equal to two. so this is going to run a loop for infinite now we need to we need to toss different fruits from the bottom and we need to create a core routine and we have already discussed a core routine and how it works in my previous sessions so let's get uh, let's create a new function and it is going to be of type core routine so i'm going to create a function over here which is of type i numerator and the name for this is toss fruits open and close parentheses and make sure that it is declared as public so first time we are going to return yield return yield return wait for seconds and it is going to wait for initially for two seconds there will be a delay and there should be new keyword over here 2.0 f now we will start an infinite loop here while infinite loop which is going to be checked always this infinite loop the purpose of this infinite loop is to toss different fruits in the air so let's port let's instantiate different fruits to be tossed in the air fruit is equal to instantiate now here we will be calling this array which we declared on top so we will have the reference to three different fruits and randomly it is it is going to pick a fruit so here the value for which index you want to use which index fruit you want to toss in the air or the game is going to toss in the air it depends upon the randomly picked number over here so the range will be from 0 to the fruit's length so random dot range starts with 0 index till the fruits length fruits dot length so it is going to initialize one fruit and make sure we need to type cast also here so this is going to return a game object so we can type cast here game object now what will be the position of this fruit or of this game object which is going to be created what will be the position at the bottom which is going to be tossed in the air so to get the position we need to declare we need to use this fruit fruit dot transform dot position is equal to new vector tree now this vector tree is going to take three parameters the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis for the x-axis we have already created the range as you can see here we have the axis x-axis min x and min z max x and max z as well so we will be giving the, the these two ranges dot range min x comma 
max x. Now, what, what is going to be the value for y? The y is going to be minus 30, which is fixed from the bottom. And for z axis, again, we can use random dot range min z comma max z. So these are the different ranges which we have given. So make sure the spellings are correct for this max. The rotation for these different game objects, like different fruits, will be random. So we can call it fruits root dot transform dot rotation is equal to random dot rotation so the rotation is going to be random now we need to add the torque value because the the fruit is going to spin in the air or rotate in the air in that case we need to add a torque to add a torque, first we need to create a rigid body here. So let me just declare a rigid body variable public rigid body RB. And now RB is equal to fruit dot get component. And we will get the rigid body component of this fruit. Once we have the reference to the rigid body, now we can add torque and we can spin this fruit in the air. So RB dot add torque. You remember in our last session, we discussed add force. We will be using this force also. But here the, the purpose of the torque is to rotate the game object or to spin the game object. So vector three dot up. times the torque value and force mod dot impulse. It should have an immediate effect. So we will be adding the torque from all the three sides from up, right and forward direction. So we will be writing few more lines of code here. RB dot add torque. So vector three dot right times torque force mod dot impulse. The last option by adding torque is RB dot add torque vector three dot forward times torque force mod dot impulse now we need to add the force so it is going to toss different game objects or fruits From different directions so that's why we will be adding a force here rb dot add force vector 3 dot up times random dot range as we want to create a random behavior here so the range is going to be minimum and maximum anti-gravity the one which we used min a gravity and max a gravity so min a gravity minimum anti gravity between max and anti gravity oh. 
comma force mod dot impulse. So let's copy this line of code a couple of times. Because we will be adding the force to up, right, and in the forward direction. Now don't forget to use this yield return. Now this yield return again will be creating the delay of one to three seconds. So the code will be yield return new wait for seconds random dot range and this one is going to be as we declared couple of variables here to get the range which is going to be min delay and max delay so it is going to be this one min delay not sorry it is going to be this one min delay and max delay so min delay comma max so save this script open unity here comes an important task now to whom we should add this this script where to add this script now there are a couple of ways to attach this script one way is you can create an empty game object and you can attach it to this empty game object you can attach to this empty game object this script this is one way and another possibility is you can attach this script to the main camera yes this is also possible and once we attach this script to the main camera as the main camera will be part of every game so uh, it is going to throw the objects it is going to run this this script automatically so this time i'm deleting this uh, empty game object from here and i'm going to attach this script to the main camera so drag and drop this to the main camera drag and drop this script to the main camera so the script is attached to the main camera now if i select this main camera you can see the script is attached to the main camera now very important thing as we discussed the fruits fruit is going to be the game object and it is an array in the in the script you can see this is a basically game object and it is an array so here we need to initialize this array so we are going to use we are going to use three different fruits for this game so if i go to low poly fruits and click on prefabs we have different prefabs available over here and we can attach these prefabs to the elements over here one is going to be apple so it is going to throw apple so drag and drop this apple to the first element at index 0 second it is going to be peach and third it is going to be strawberry so we have initialized these three elements so randomly these th these different fruits are going to be thrown in the air but first of all we need to adjust the camera also right now the camera is right now the camera is placed on a default position so we need to adjust the camera so select this camera and set the position of this camera to minus 130 minus 130 that's the position of this camera and field view and the field of view this one the field of view should be adjusted to 
30. And the for value, right now it is 1000. The value is 1000. So change this to somewhere to 20. So we have adjusted the, the camera position as well. Let's run this game and see the output. As you can see, no output is shown. So let's check what is wrong with our code. Though we are not getting any error message in the console also. There is no error message in the console. But we are not getting the output. Let's see. Let's stop this game and check the script. Yes, the issue with this script is this, this function is not called in the start method. So we need to call this core routine in the start method. So call this start and the name of the method is cross roots make sure it is a method save it and now let's run this as you can see the objects are being thrown but the field view is very far and we cannot see them so let's adjust the camera position again So here are a couple of fixes to overcome this issue. I just changed the y axis value of this main camera, y axis value and z axis value here. And field of view is still 25 and for value is 200. If I run this game and see the output, as you can see different prefabs are tossed in the air, but the size of these prefabs are very small. So let's increase the scale of these prefabs so that they should become visible. So to, in order to increase the size of these prefabs, so you need to go to this low poly fruits folder and click on this FPX model and see initial scale in our last video we set it to 0 0.3. So change the scale to 2 or let's adjust with 3. And don't forget to apply these settings and we need to do one more change over here in the script if you see in the script missed I just mistyped this random range actually here it should be only range random dot range so delete this random extra keyword so it should be random dot range make this change in the in the pro fruits script also it was a it was a typo error so save this open unity and run this game as you can see now these prefabs are bigger than before and they are quite visible and they are being tossed from different positions with and and they are rotating as well because of this torque field because of this torque force added to the prefabs through the script. So tweak all these changes and create your project with these settings. I'll see you in the next video.